Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Umath again, and in today's video we want to have a look at the exponential function, it's Taylor series, we want to prove Euler's formula and we want to prove that the Euler number E is not rational, okay? This is a very interesting video and uh, the, the primary thing that we are using for this um, is the Taylor series of the exponential function, so let's start off. Okay, let's have a look at the Taylor series, or better, the Taylor series evaluated at x equals 0. And the formula is pretty simple. We have to sum from n equals 0 to infinity all these derivatives evaluated in x equals 0. And what we have to do also is we have to divide this by n factorial and then multiply with x to the n. So let's have a look at it, it's pretty easy and pretty fast. If you have the exponential function, what is its derivative? It's again the exponential function, so it doesn't matter how often we differentiate this function, we always get the exponential function out of this. Now if you plug in x equals 0, you get the exponential of 0, and this is the value of 1, okay? This is e to the 0, and it doesn't matter how n which number you take to the 0th power, it's always equal to 1. One exception is 0 to the 0. This is a little bit problematic, so I will um, not include this in my statement. Okay, now let's just use it. Now we found out that the nth derivative evaluated in 0 of the exponential function is just simply 1, so we have only 1 here so these terms are always 1, uh, that means that we are only left with x to the n over n factorial, like here, because all these factors, which were the derivatives um, evaluated in 0, are just simply 1, and we get this very nice looking uh, expression for the Taylor series of the exponential function, which is 1 plus x to the 1 factorial plus x to the second power over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. Very important mm, is that the radius of convergence which can be shown using the quotient rule or um, even better using uh, the cauchy hadamard theorem that I um, showed you in the very first video, you can show that the radius of convergence is infinitely large. As long as your x is finite, you can take um, even more and more terms in a series and get a convergence sum not depending on x. Okay, So this is what I wanted to imply with this. The magnitude of x can be uh, infinitely large but has to be fixed but smaller than infinite. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Now let's have a look what can we do with this guy. Okay, The first thing that I want to show you is a very nice uh, series expression for Euler's number e. Okay, uh, I think you know what uh, e, the number e is. It's something 2.7 and so forth. And if we plug in uh, 1 into our Taylor series, then we get this even simpler expression. 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial and so forth. And it is pretty fast converging because of these factorial terms. Uh, imagine if you are in, in a tenth term, then you have 10th factorial, which is pretty large as a number. And now what we want to show is that this number e, which we have a Taylor expansion for it, now we will show that this number cannot be rational. Okay, This is our second step. And before we start, we want to first assume, let us assume that this Euler number is not irrational, it's rational. So we find two numbers m and n, and these are uh, simplified as much as you can, so there are no common factors in there. This is the simplest way in writing e. Okay. Now, uh, what we know is that if we add these guys together, you can just try this, you will never end up having a ratio that is equal to e. Okay. But now let's uh, really prove this. Okay, and how can we prove this? Very simply, we just take the series and break it up after 
n factorial and then we have the remainder here 1 plus n plus 1 factorial plus 1 over n plus 2 factorial and so forth the important part is that we split this up we have a left side we have this part here and we have this right hand side okay now what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this equation through with n factorial now on the left hand side one can easily see what will happen is that you get n minus 1 factorial multiplied with m because this n and this n in this factorial expression will cancel if you don't know what factorial means it just means multiply all natural numbers from 1 to n for example 5 factorial means 1 multiplied with 2 multiplied with 3 multiplied with 4 multiplied with 5 so that means this is multiplying all the natural numbers until n and if we divide by n then this is just the product of all natural numbers until n minus 1 on the right hand side we get very simple expressions also we get here n factorial here we get n factorial over 1 factorial n factorial over 2 factorial n factorial over 3 factorial and so forth here again n factorial over n factorial and then here we get n factorial over n plus 1 factorial n factorial n plus 2 factorial and so forth now the important part comes now we split it up this whole Taylor series into uh, two parts the left hand side a is pretty easy the right hand side was split it up into two parts first of all this is this part and then here now let's have a look at this a and b term so a I told you already this is a natural number because this n factorial is a product of all the natural numbers until n and then we divide by n so we are left only with all the natural numbers as a product until n minus 1 and we multiply this with m and both these expressions are natural numbers so their product is also a natural number so cleared out we know that the left hand side is a natural number and if everything that we assumed was right and especially this guy here that e is rational then this right hand side should also come out as a natural number now let's have a look at b okay if you look at b it's pretty simple to see that this is a natural number because first of all n factorial is natural sorry is a natural number then we have n factorial over 1 factorial when and you can easily see that this guy is is um, containing all the natural numbers from n 1 to n so you can um, really um, go ahead and eliminate these guys or reduce uh, these fractions here also so n factorial has 2 factorial in it so you can um, create a natural number from this natural number from this and also from this and the last one n factorial over n factorial will just give you plus one so what we see is this b is also constructed out of all natural numbers okay so b is also natural now let's have a look at c what does happen with that okay and if you look at it what will happen is that n factorial uh, over n plus 1 factorial this guy is nothing else than n factorial multiplied with n plus 1 so we can cancel out the n factorial and we are only left with n plus 1 the last term here here for this guy we are left with two terms n plus 1 and n uh, plus 2 because the n factorial cancelled out all until n plus 1 and n plus 2 for the next term we would have n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 here again for the same arguments now let's have a look what will happen with these guys what we can do for these guys is that um, actually if you go ahead and try to calculate n then you see that n is pretty pretty large by hand and you still have no ratio for e okay so what we can say is that 1 plus n 1 over n plus 1 is at least smaller than one third because we you can try this by hand plug in uh, all the values for the Taylor series of e until 1 over 5 uh, um, 1 over 5 factorial then still you don't have anything so n has to be at least larger than 5 and if you plug something in that is larger than 5 then you have something smaller than 1 over 3 for this guy it's almost the same argument we say that this guy is um, 
here in front 1 over n plus 1 is smaller than 1 third and n plus 2 is also smaller than 1 third because if this guy is smaller than 1 third this is at least smaller than 1 third and when I'm telling you this guy I actually mean 1 over this here okay now for the last term we have almost the same so we have 1 third multiplied with 1 third multiplied with 1 third and so forth you see actually this series just goes onward so uh, actually this is 1 third to the third power then we get 1 third over uh, to the fourth power and so forth now if you look at this series, this should remind you of something. This looks like the geometric series that we had in this series already. And um, the only difference is that we are starting at 1 over 3. So this is our x. We are adding x plus x squared plus x cubed and so forth. We are missing the first term, which was 1. This is the reason why I subtracted here. And if you take the series, you can just replace this infinite series by 1 over 1 minus 1 third. Now what is important about this is that we can only use this because 1 third is smaller than 1 from its magnitude. So we can use the geometric series to calculate that. And if you simplify this guy, you will see that the result is 1 half. Okay? <coughs> Sorry. Now, let's collect all the stuff that we found out. What we found out was that first of all A was a natural number on the left hand side, B was a natural number, but C we found out that this is actually positive, you can see we are adding positive terms, but we also found out that this is smaller than one half. What this means is that this C is not a natural number and this tells us that we have some kind of contradiction to our assumption that E can be expressed as a rational number. And that's actually uh, concluding our proof that E is an irrational number. It is It cannot be expressed at a, as a ratio of two integer numbers, okay? Or better, natural numbers. Now, Let's have a look at something else that is also very, very interesting. And actually, we are doing very, very interesting things right now. We are looking at the Taylor expression of, or better, the Taylor expansion of the exponential function again. And now I'm doing something very tricky. I hope um, you know uh, what i is. i is the complex unit or the imagery unit and I will explain you what i actually is. i is the number that you can square and get minus one out of it. Okay. I know in school you learned if you square something it is always positive or equal to zero but try to think of a number i as being uh, if you square this number you get minus one out of it never care about what it actually is just say that this is such number i okay we don't know that's the reason why you call it imagery number okay you imagine yourself that this is a number now if we do that we have to plug in everywhere ix here ix in here what you see is we get one plus ix then here ix squared ix cubed ix uh, fourth and so forth now we will use a little uh, trick because i to the zeroth power is equal to one i to the first power is obviously one, i itself i to the second power this is what i told you is minus one if you take i to the third power what will happen is you have i squared multiplied with i but i squared is minus one so it's minus i if you have i to the fourth power then this is nothing else than i squared multiplied with i squared but i squared is minus one so we have minus one multiplied with minus one giving you one okay and we will use this to reduce these guys for example this i squared will give us just minus one this i cubed will give us minus i this i to the fourth power will give us plus one and so forth so we do that we get this reduced kind of expression of the Taylor series. We get 1 plus ix over 1 factorial minus x squared, 2 factorial minus i x cubed over 3 factorial plus 4 x to the 4 over 4 factorial and so forth. Now I'm doing a little little small trick. As you can see we have two parts in here. We have numbers that have no i in them 
these are real parts and if you look at them 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so forth and we have imagery parts here we have i multiplied with a open bracket x over 1 factorial minus x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth let's just rewrite these guys okay and you should notice something very very interesting as you can see this kind of expression is nothing else than the Taylor series of a very um, interesting function the cosine function we derived that in this uh, in the video in the previous video now here on the right hand side I let you guess what is this this is the sine function so what we really derived here was the fo famous Euler formula which is relating the exponential function to the cosine function and the sine function because e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine sine x okay this is a very very important formula in complex analysis and almost in all mathematics or in electrical engineering and physics this is a basic rule and what it tells you is that actually these guys the cosine and sine function are nothing new to us they actually are nothing else than a part of the exponential function and there is a way to express these guys by using exponentials okay I will do a video on that in uh, about complex numbers about uh, de Moivre's um, formula and so forth and all these cool interesting stuffs I will uh, do videos on that but actually that's it okay let's comprehend what we did today we found out what the Taylor series of the exponential function is we found out uh, that e is irrational using the Taylor expansion um, of the exponential function evaluated at x equals 1 not evaluated but we just plugged in into the Taylor series x equals 1 and this is what we got and we also derived the famous Euler formula just using Taylor series okay I hope you had fun and like always if you still have some questions feel free to ask and um, that's actually it so see you guys